Heat stressed and close crowded colonies are irritable colonies. Proper placement of hives can assist in reducing stinging risks. Apiaries should be established in areas with sufficient shade. Hives should be placed in the same types of places that beekeepers would want to be if they had to stand in the same spot all day. Somewhere shady and close to a water source. When required, haphazardly arranged apiaries should be reorganized to minimize the risks of mass disturbances. Hives ought to be repositioned to increase distance between hives to at least 1.5 meters and the hive should be arranged, if possible, into a circle with entrances facing outwards in order to create a relatively safe zone within the circle. This configuration reduces the potential for the drift of alarm pheromone and other cues from one hive to another that can set off a domino effect of infuriated colonies. The space in this apiary did not allow for the circular arrangement of hives. Instead, the hives were arranged in a line underneath a windbreak of trees. The entrances of each pair of hives faced away from each other, creating a relatively safe zone in between the hives, which allowed approach. So we can see what we've done here is we've left, um, we've got the hives positioned so that each pair of hives face away, away from each other so that the workers can come in and clear the weeds with having uh, less exposures to the less exposure to the bees from each of the respective hive entrances. Removing tall weeds can reduce the risk of bushfires as well as removing the bridges that ants can use to climb onto hives. Here you can see hives that have been arranged into the recommended circular configuration. Here we see a uh, Kenya Topar hive apiary in which we've just finished arranging the hives into a into a circle. Actually two circles, they kind of a, an inner circle there and an outer circle here. And that uh, that will allow kind of an avenue of safety where uh, hive management activities can be performed without having to stand in front of uh, the, directly in front of the hive entrances. Here we see in this location the, the top our hives have been spread out. They've had the luxury of having a well-established woodlot, and they can they they use that to their advantage by spreading the hives out. that each hive has virtually its own its own tree. See a termite mound there. Here we are in Kojokuru. Kojokura. Kojokura. Mm -hmm. And we're rubbing down the hives with lemongrass and right. we're rubbing down a little bit with beeswax afterwards. This will perfume the hives with odors that bees find very attractive and will hopefully draw the bees to occupy your hives during the swarm season.
<laughs> so are they happy that they've that they've taken up beekeeping? Good protective equipment, including a wide-brimmed hat, veil, coveralls, and gloves, are essential to keeping beekeepers happy by protecting them from the fierce stings of the African bees. If not worn, protective equipment should at least be carried along into an apiary, even if you're not intending to open up the hives, just in case of an emergency. A simple device for spraying water or for applying smoke to the hive are other useful tools for controlling bees during management. This, this is a smoke car that helps to uh, push the bees to one side of the hive to enable you get access to the mature honeycombs or maybe to do a very well inspection thoroughly. The smoker has got three parts, the lead, the itself, and then the blower part. Uh, inside it, we've got some dry matan. Some use uh, dry guinea corn stalks. Some use dry matter of cow dung, and others use any dry matter, like, like this. But to empty it, you make sure that you don't cause any bush fire. You either dig a hole, and empty it like this, and then cover it with F, like I'm doing, so that you make sure that you don't cause bush fire like others are talking about. That is the, that gives meaning to modern bee keeping. Small hives are sometimes called swarm boxes and, as the name implies, are used to catch bees during the swarming season. This is a clay receptacle that is used to water poultry. Larger domestic animals cannot reach the water through these small openings. The vessel was further modified to provide water to bees by placing small stones in the vessel to prevent poultry from drinking all the water and to provide landing sites for the bees. Grass matting was sometimes used to protect hives from the sun where ample shade from trees was unavailable. You see the shea butter drippings underneath the... Uh... Yeah, that is the shea butter oil. The, 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 that is the leftover. They pour and then it, so that it will scare away termites. And... The oily shea nut residue is also used to treat the wood directly, protecting it from termites and other wood destroying insects such as ants. A simple device for straining guinea worm out of drinking water can also be used in honey processing. Mm -hmm. That uh, they also use it to sieve uh, their, their honey ah, to good. make it more uh -huh. more, more, more clean. Uh -huh, uh -huh. Good, good. Producing clean, clear honey, as shown here, is one of the principal objectives of beekeeping. Clean, clear honey that is free of small particles and through which light will easily pass can fetch a higher price than will bush honey. Bush honey can be distinguished because light does not easily pass through it owing to the quantity of pollen and wax that is mixed in with the honey. Although bush honey is still a nutritious food, filtering honey that is harvested only from ripe combs that do not contain brood or pollen ensures that the final product is attractive. Such clean, clear honey has good flavor and will not spoil if stored for long periods in clean, closed containers. Honey that is packaged and labeled in attractive small containers will usually fetch more money than selling the same quantity of honey in larger containers. Of course, it takes more time and effort to produce the smaller packages, so both ways of packaging may be good ways to increase income through improved honey production methods.